In case you missed it, 2020, part one. In case you missed it, things are still happening in the United States and everywhere else. Some of these things may not seem like much at first glance, but I can assure you there will be ripples and potential shockwaves to follow. I look through the headlines every day and see what sticks out to me. Sometimes it's just interesting or annoying facts. Other times it's foreshadowing of things to come. From now until our civilization reaches the other end of this bizarre tunnel that we are currently in, I'll be compiling and reporting on some of these informational nuggets. Hopefully, they will give you something to think about in the weeks and months to come. There was another wave of recent protests in select cities in different parts of the U.S. During one of these in Austin, Texas, a protester armed with an AK-47 approached a right-wing car that was slowly but surely pushing through the crowd. The protesters, as you know, are not fans of cars anywhere near them. Words were quickly exchanged, and then at some point, the armed protester fired five AK rounds at near point-blank range at the car, all missed. The driver then responded seconds later with three shots to the chest. Police and medics came, but the protester ended up dying in the street in front of the crowd. Watching the video was surreal because I realized something very different between the left and the right. When things get too real or too violent, the left tends to fold. There were hundreds of protesters surrounding the scene, but at no time did they choose to cross the police tape and exact mob justice. Try to explain it all you want, but if it was a right-wing protest, that car would have been turned into Swiss cheese. There was a group of frontline doctors who went to Capitol Hill to give their take on the pandemic as we know it, stating that the hysteria wasn't warranted and that there were cheap and available preventive methods and treatments. Most of you already realize that. What was interesting was that once the president endorsed this group, it was immediately condemned as fake science, if it was covered at all. You see, the press conference was nothing of the sort. No mainstream media groups even attended the event. It's not part of the narrative. Mainstream has no interest in a simple cure. There are no ratings in it. If you want to hear more, just type in frontline doctors into any search engine. Eventually, you'll get to them. Google has announced that it will encourage workers to work from home. Nothing new there, except that they are pushing it to July of 2021. It's apparent that some at the higher levels know what's coming. Other companies are sure to follow, but we are a nation of copycats and clones. If an idea works for one group, others will latch on to it because, well, again, people are lazy. No need to reinvent the wheel. This brings me to schools reopening right now. Most of our educational groups are, as you know, built on the opposite of social distancing. There are now dozens of large teachers unions across the country who are suing the states because the older teachers are fully convinced that the now germ-infested but apparently immune children will infect them with the virus. The short version is that teachers don't want to go back to school because they think they will die. Strange world indeed. To create a new educational system based on fear is near to impossible. We don't have the time, the money, or the direction to pull it off. Schooling is inevitable, however. So once the first counties came up with a plan, many others simply copied their blueprints and moved forward. Right out of the gate, you start to see huge problems with how they are reopening. Students only have the option of going to school two days a week, either Monday and Thursday or Tuesday and Friday. 
Wednesday, the school is literally closed for deep cleaning. I say optional because if you have the right hardware and software, you don't have to attend at all. You can just take classes from home. You see, they don't want you there and are creating so much negative reinforcement that many will just stay home and phone it in. If you do go, many schools require the students to wear masks full time. Some even encourage the parents to have their children start wearing masks at home so they can get used to the procedure. Look up some of the promotional videos being put out by the schools for the parents. It's like watching an Android factory. Whatever your school experience was like years ago, remember it fondly, because what's out there now is an abomination. Speaking of fond memories, remember Disneyland? Yeah, that's still not open. But Disney World is, that's in Florida. They tried to open, and wouldn't you know it, the people found a way to have more fun than it was allowed. You see, currently, you can't eat and wear a mask at the same time. It's impossible. Disney World, like other theme parks and fairgrounds, were built so that people could buy food and walk around with it. You know, ice cream, cotton candy, oversized lollipops, etc. Armed with all these tasty treats, Families at Disney World just walked around and ate and drank without the masks, and that simply would not do. So Disney made a park change, stating that you could only eat while sitting in a designated area. They then raised the stakes by creating new mask requirements. No neck gaiters, no scarves, no bandanas, no masks with vents. Only industrial use masks allowed and anyone over the age of two are required to wear them. How can this be the happiest place on earth if no one can see you smile? Professional sports is not only failing to adapt, they are showing their true colors, so to speak. I don't know if I have the right words for the situation, so consider this. The NBA is still trying to salvage their season and are playing the remaining games very late without arenas or fans. No real surprises there, but what did catch my eye is that while only a few players in American football took a knee to protest inequality, over 90% of the basketball players took that same knee. But that wasn't even the strangest thing in this virus-riddled sports world. When the WNBA, women's basketball, took the court and the national anthem started to play, they all walked off the court and stayed in the locker room until the song ended. And they are going to keep doing this until the season ends. So the American flag is now fair game. Would that many basketball players have turned their back on it if there were thousands of fans in the arena creating peer pressure? I doubt it but we will probably never know, at least until the vaccine is released. But that part of the story is still unfolding and will be discussed more deeply as we move forward. This week, the sports world does have one more little side road into uncharted territory, that being the new quarantine cruelty. Baseball has the least chance of physical contact. Most of the time, players are standing with yards and yards of open grass around them. Yet the players are still tested before every game, and if they test positive, even if they are showing no symptoms, they are banned from playing for two weeks. If a team has enough players test positive in one day, they may have to forfeit the game. And then there are the players' unions, who have made it clear that players who don't feel safe can opt out, because as you know, most of the people in the world believe the entire narrative hook, line, and sinker. That's a fishing term. Last but not least, I have to reassure people that you're not crazy if you are thinking there is a coin shortage. It's nationwide, but the media isn't giving it much attention. More and more stores are posting handmade signs saying that if you don't have exact change, you will have to pay with a card. It's why I now carry 99 cents in my pocket when I go out because I will always have exact change. Taco Bell and Chick-fil-A, 
who do a lot of cash business, recently took it to a new level by offering free meals to people who pay entirely with coins. If you are looking for grub on the cheap, grab your piggy banks and head down. From what I've read, you basically get your meal and then a certificate for another meal free. Could this be the final push towards a cashless society where all financial transactions are monitored at an almost microscopic level? It's possible. I'll let you know more as it starts to come into focus. We close this out by noting that all these things are part of a plan that has been in motion for a long time. As we move into the next stages, know that you are still an individual, still able to think for yourself and make choices of your own. There is still hope. Remember that it always seems darkest just before the dawn and that you are never, nor will you ever, be alone. Thank you.